that's the letter that we've heard her read a couple of times. We're going to finally get to hear it fully. It's a letter to Ishmael that she writes when she's in the internment camp. So what is he admitting to there, to his lawyer? Yeah, he thought about it, right? Why? Because this guy, yeah, hasn't given up the land. But, does anyone notice how people keep on talking about it's hard to read the expressions of the Japanese people? Do you guys think that is an a objective comment, or it's a racist comment? Yeah, it's definitely also, what's another word we might use for that? Stereo stereotype, right? Because of course Japanese people have emotions and they show emotions in their face. But that being said, there are some cultural differences too, right? About how much, like you could say that, that Latin cultures in general are more expressive of emotions, right? Than maybe like really uptight Anglo cultures are, right? Um, so there are some cultural differences about how we show emotion. But of course Japanese people show emotion as well, right? You know better than that, Mr. Hooks. But that's part of the answer seven, too. Or sit down the stereotyping. See, he's taking the trial from the specifics, right, of, of Kazu and this specific crime. And he's saying, what's your duty as a citizen of the United States? So he's trying to make it a us versus them, them being all Japanese. As an American. The prosecutor in To Kill a Mockingbird did a similar thing, right? He talked about the responsibility of the jurors, these white jurors. So, Ishmael finally decides to tell everyone about the evidence he found at the lighthouse because does anyone have a. I mean, we just saw that section. Does anyone have the answer? See? That's great. Yeah, he didn't want Hatsu to suffer, right? Um, the other thing is he went back to the cedar tree, right? Which uh, one of the questions later on is about the symbolism of the cedar tree. But it's a safe place, right, that the kids grew up together in. And it's an isolated space where they don't have to worry about... Uh, sorry, I'm just gonna stay here. Worry, they don't have to worry about the pressures of the outside world. Um, so that's what the cedar tree represents, right? This safe place that they can be their own people. So once he goes back into there, he's able to escape from the anger that he has about losing his arm, about not getting the woman that he loved, and about his father dying and the pressure of living up to that. So he, back in his safe space, he's able to realize, oh wait, I care about this person and I should do the right thing. So that's the answer to number three, is that he, he decides that he loves her still and wants to treat her right. And that means telling the truth about what happened to her husband. Number four is what evidence do the Ishmael and the sheriffs discover on the boat? They end up discovering basically just evidence that uh, Hatsu was there. I mean that, uh, sorry, Kazu, not Hatsu. Uh, so Kazu was on the boat, but that they basically show that he did replace the battery. They find like a spool of his clothing, and then also the cup, that second coffee cup from the very beginning that was rolling on the floor. They identify that as being Kazu's. Um, and the story checks out with the, the lighthouse logs that, remember, Ishmael had researched and found out somebody else had seen the boats approach each other, and there was a swell at the right time um, that probably would have caused Carl to fall from the top of getting down this lantern and kit and die by accident. So basically the evidence, so number four, is is basically just showing evidence that uh, it was an accident. The guy died by falling off of his own boat. The evidence specifically, you can say the coffee cup, you can say the battery, you can say um, the spool of clothing. Um, and then Right before this scene, this last scene that we're going to show you guys, um, the judge is appalled at the new evidence. Okay, They bring it to him and he's like, all right, well, we better do something about this. But uh, he also is a little distrustful at first 
um, but basically is only trusting uh, of Ishmael because of his reputation. So basically, Ishmael takes his reputation and puts it on the line for these people to be happy that are not white like him, and in fact, you know, it's for his ex-girlfriend to be happy with her new, new husband. So that's like a big decision on his part to do that. Nels, who is the public defender, tells Ishmael that accidents rule every corner of the universe except the chambers of the human heart. What does this mean and how is it important to the overall theme of the movie? This is a more difficult question. Um, what Nels says there is that basically um, there is nothing but fate. There, fate doesn't exist except for in matters of the heart. Okay, And what he's meaning is, is that Ishmael was meant to fall in love with Hatsu and then get rejected by him so that in the end Ishmael would be able to save Kazu, okay? So that only if he had fallen in love in that way would that the story have ended up being a, a happy one, right? Not an innocent man punished for a crime he didn't commit. Um, so the overall theme of how that applies is that uh, one of the themes of the movie is that we each kind of have our roles and fate in life. And, and that you can either fight that or you can accept it. Um, and sometimes that means good things happening to you and sometimes that means bad things happening to you. But the whole point is that if you don't kind of roll with the punches, have you guys ever heard that phrase before? Does anyone know what that means, roll with the punches? Yeah, just take it, that's another way to do it, exactly. Whether it's good or bad, you just make the most of it. Uh, that's, that's an overall theme of this movie. So does that make sense? Number six, you guys just want to write, um, you know, that that Ishmael, it was Ishmael's fate to play the role that he did, and that that reflects everybody accepting the reality of life. So what we want you guys to do is, you can go ahead and write your names at the top. This is going to be a group project, this page. So this Venn diagram and the multiple choice on the back side. Yep. Well, you don't have to work together. I don't care. You can work on your own. It's easier for you, though. I would figure. So the Venn diagram, the two circles, you're going to, on the left side, go ahead and write at the top, To Kill a Mockingbird. Everybody write To Kill a Mockingbird. What? It's okay, yeah. And then on the right side, go ahead and write Snow Falling on Cedars. Snow Falling on Cedars, the name of this movie we just watched. So what we want you guys to do is just go ahead and um, fill in as much as you can, you know a Venn diagram, on the one side put characteristics that are only true of To Kill a Mockingbird, and on the far right side only true of Snow Falling on Cedars, and then compare, you know, things that are the same put in the middle. Exactly, think about it. Snow Falling on Cedars is about Japanese people. It was also about, it was on the West Coast, right? To Kill a Mockingbird was about the South. And about, yeah, black versus white. Suspicious versus 